Hello and welcome to Money Matters. My name is Bosi Mbogazi and today we're discussing the dreaded topic of debt. What is debt? How do we get ourselves out of debt? And what does God have to say about debt and the way that we are living our lives indebted to the societies and the commercialities that we are unfortunately subjected to? To help us unpack this question, we have Mr. Mashuru Ravengani. Mr. Mashuru Ravengani, welcome to Thank Money you. Matters. Thank you. Mr. Ma Mr. Ravengani, what is debt? Debt is something owed, uh, usually money which is owed to a lender by somebody who is a borrower. So you owe money to a creditor um, and yeah, it's usually in the form of money. So is it usually I go to an institution, if I, in South Africa it would be mm -hmm. a financial institution yes. um, and I take out a loan? Yes. And there's pre-agreed terms, yeah. and now I have to, on those terms, pay back yes. certain installments, or I've taken an item that I can pay off, off over a period of time, so like yes. a car or furniture, etc. Yeah, so to an institution, also to a person, you can go and borrow money from me and um, can be in debt to me for zero interest or, or an interest of a particular amount. So that's what debt is all about, yes. What causes someone to take up a debt? Uh, debt differs. Uh, there's wide range. There's what mm. they can call a healthy debt, which will be like trying to buy a house okay. where you pay a bond. Um, a car sometimes is also considered a healthy debt. Mm. Then you go to down on the other end of the spectrum where there's unhealthy debt mm. of credit card, overdraft facilities, and so on, which is sometimes created because of our materialistic society, mm. uh, conspicuous consumption that, that rages where um, instant gratification, uh, wanting mm. to enjoy something now, uh, you know, so I could have cooked food at home, but I'm deciding I'm gonna go and swipe my credit card at KFC or <laughs> any other place. <laughs> and in the process, I get myself into debt. So there's a wide range of debt uh, that we can look at here. What are the implications of being indebted? For some reason, it almost looks like when I get into debt, it's a very exciting thing because that which I cannot afford, I seem to be able to afford mm. it. Uh, so I'm enjoying the car, I'm enjoying whatever things that I have. But as soon as, actually from this time you start paying the debt, you mm. start feeling the discomfort <laughs> because um, I've already finished eating the KFC. It has yes. already been digested. <laughs> It's gone out now. I'm starting to pay that in a credit card, but it gets worse when I can no longer pay that debt. Mm. The stress mm. that it comes in into, into 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 my life. I was talking to to young people the other day, um, and I was talking about you know the idea of trying to impress each other. So yes. here is a young man who could buy a little car. Um, maybe a little car that he can pay 2,500 installment if there is a car like that. Yes. So, but... There are a few. The, but <laughs> but he, he decides that if I buy this 2.5 car, my friends won't really... My peers, yes, I, don't, I won't yes, be sitting on the same yeah, level yeah, as exactly. my peers. Exactly. So, uh. so he decides he's going to add 1.5 on that, to okay. make it 4,000, to get a little car which looks a bit bigger. Okay to impress them so that when he arrives, you can say, oh, wow, the wheels you're driving. Mm. So every month he's paying a premium of 1.5 of the money that he doesn't have. For his ego. For his ego and to impress and to be seen. And he does that, but you can only do that by moving money from one credit card to another mm. and so on. But after a year and a half, it catches up catches with him. Up. Now he can no longer pay. Mm. The car gets repossessed. Mm. And when the car gets repossessed, he can no longer even go to church or the places where he used to meet with his friends because mm. now he's ashamed. If only he had stuck. So look from the excitement of being appreciated for driving a fancy mm. car to where he finds himself now today, where he's getting into a taxi. He doesn't even remember how to point the finger to a Texas to town <laughs> or, to, or to any other thing, he gets into trouble with that situation. So, and that's what 
excitement turning into sadness. So how does one calculate getting into debt? Because in certain instances, for example, buying a house or buying a car, um, you, you, we, we hardly have the millions or the hundreds of thousands that are required for those assets. So how does one then, I guess, create themselves a budget? Yeah. Or how does one determine what, good, what debt is good to get into? I think it is um, one of the things we need to realize from the very start is that debt by its nature, it's not good for us. Mm. So unlike the excitement of getting ourselves into debt, mm. we need to go there with great reservations. Mm. So that even when I look into the idea of buying a, a, a house, if I'm still staying in that little flat mm. and I'm saving every month X amount, mm. even by the time I decide to buy, I can make a deposit of 20% yes. or even more, bringing the debt commitment every month to be much lower. lower. You know, and because the, we can almost say the higher the debt, the more unhappiness you're gonna have. Mm. And so if you can reduce that, mm as much as you can, you are actually getting yourself into a better position in terms of your own happiness and also contentment in the family. So what does one have to do to stay out of debt? Um, I think, um, I always say that maturity, um, the idea of being patient and waiting is a sign of maturity. Mm. So if one can say that, you know, in my life, I'm gonna wait, um, I'm gonna save, um, even issues of a car, we have been telling ourselves today that, you know, a car, it's a healthy debt, you, might just, mm. you just have to do it. But even a car, you can actually be able to save. We look mm. into people in our neighboring countries. Um, I was doing uh, seminars on finance some time ago in Zimbabwe. And the issue of debt was not so much exciting because most people were buying their cars cash. Mm. They were waiting, they were saving mm. until they get enough money and they buy the car. Mm. So I had to skip some of my section in, finance, <laughs> in the family finance management and because we, we have told ourselves today that we can't. But mm. technically, if you can save, um, I can wait for four years, I can actually be able to buy the car cash. Mm. But who wants to wait for four years? Mm. Because we want to eat now, we want to enjoy it now, yeah. and that's the challenge. And one of the things also which is also crazy about debt is that it seems like there is a higher status you have in the community when you have a bigger debt. <laughs> so the bigger the debt you have, the bigger person you are. So if I, I think let's expand on that. If I roll in into the church um, with a car oh, of, a of, two a million, of a two million debt, everybody looks up to me and says, wow. wow, the Lord is blessing this man. Look <laughs> at that debt. Yes. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag <laughs> blessed. you're in debt. <laughs> <laughs> so, but instead of us being excited that the person is coming in with a debt which is two million on wheels, we should have been calling a prayer band. <laughs> how, how did one of our members suddenly, without thinking, get into a debt on wheels, mm. which can be crushed and be written off? And depreciate so quickly. And depreciate so quickly. But all of us will look up to people who have got bigger debts. I think in, 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 in this series, we will discuss various issues. And I think one of the issues that we'll definitely touch on repeatedly is the issue of setting financial goals. Yes. And um, I guess the having a financial goal of a two million rand debt on wheels is, isn't a real goal. Um, how does one go about setting realistic goals in, in the context of debt and dealing with debt or, or the creation of debt? Because we, we are going to deal with the latter part of now I've got it, what do I do? Mm. But we, we, there's a process that we go through as people to create the state. And I think we also just need to deal with that aspect as well. So what are the financial aspects or the financial goals we should be addressing in the creation of, of debt? I will say it needs to start a little bit with the idea of contentment. Yes. The idea that I am happy as I am. Mm. I don't need to have a car like that to dress like that, to be accepted, to mm. be acknowledged, to be somebody. I am content with who I am. And I always say to, to, to young couples, be content, be happy with who you are. 
um, if you still live in that little one bedroom flat and you are, that's all you are, are able to afford at the moment while you are saving for something better, mm. be content there. The fact that you've got that couch that has been there for the last 10 years. Mm. You don't owe anybody a new couch. Mm. If they don't like sitting on your couch, let them bring theirs. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and if for some reason that couch has got holes, get a blanket, cover it. It's fine. <laughs> you don't owe anybody. You know, be content with what you have. Mm. And, and when we are content, you don't need to add anything else around me mm. to be accepted. You know, we are buying cars. SUVs, four-wheel drive, that never goes off-road. Mm. The only thing they go off-road <laughs> is maybe during a funeral, they mount the pavement, the gap on the pavement. That's, that's all it is. And that's why you, even when we buy those cars, even when I have got a garage, I don't park it inside the garage. Mm. I put it in the driveway. So, so then, Oh, yes, so that they can see. So if I don't have to add things on me mm. to be somebody, mm. I am content with who I am. So then... Mm. I look at debt differently. Yes. That means even when you look into the issue of debt is that, um, do I really need this? Mm. If we can distinguish between the wants and the needs mm. and prioritize the needs mm. and remove the wants. Mm. Now, ladies uh, in particular, um, look into the issue. There's a wedding next week. Mm. Uh, I need a new dress. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't need a new dress. The people who are getting married needs a new dress, to whatever you're wearing. You, you don't need, they don't give you a budget. Can you imagine in a month there are three weddings? Where are you going to be dresses. getting this? And I'm saying, you can wear the same dress. Anyone who complains, let them buy you a dress. <laughs> but, but we are getting into um, Edgar's and boutiques mm. and to get new dresses for, they planned for their wedding and they budgeted mm. and they didn't include you. Yes. And, and then we've got conferences for the church and uh, I need a new dress. The gospel is not more clearer in a new dress yeah. you know, or in a new suit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can go on with what I wore last year in the same conference and let nobody complain because I'm happy with who I am. <laughs> you know, if we can have that liberation in our own mind in terms of how we're perceived, because that's where it starts. Mm. You know, I, I was reading something on um, social media. Somebody says, as soon as a person buys a new car, they start organizing uh, the, um, what do you call this thing? The get together of people that went to school together. Oh, you know, yes, alumni, the reunions. Re reunions yes. Just because I've got a new car. You need to show the car. <laughs> of course. <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've definitely touched on some critical issues, especially around the contentment of self and not new outfits every week, ladies. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to unpack a little more of this after the break. We'll be back after this. Hello and welcome back to Money Matters. My name is Busim Bogazi and we're still sitting with Mr. Rabingani. Mr. Rabingani, we were touching on a lot of issues of what causes debt. And yeah. Some of those issues are a little bit close and sensitive to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they are quite practical sure. and one, what, something that you emphasized quite clearly to us was contentment with self. Yeah. And I guess that's directly linked to a healthy relationship with God. Sure. But before we get into the relationship with what the Bible has to say about debt and us getting into debt, I can't afford my debts now. Yes. What do I do next? I suppose, um, you know, one of the things I have been saying, even before we get to that critical where I'm already in, in a crisis mode, mm. um, one of the things I have been moving around talking about, uh, particularly in our family life seminars, is been saying that there actually needs to be um, almost a radical approach into looking into debt. Okay. Um, we actually need to kill debt before it kills us and kills our families. Mm. Because debt is a destroyer of happiness mm. and is a destroyer of many marriages in the process. Mm. And I imagine this whole process where we actually 
one day have a service, maybe on a Sunday, mm. where we bring all our cards from, for the store shops, cards, or store cards, credit, credit cards, cards, and make a big fire and sacrifice them. Will the fire erase the debt? <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, it will stop us from swiping. Okay. Because, because you see, and, uh, and I'll, I'll let you, one of the things that, you know, one of the challenges with the cards yes. is that they desensitize you from the value of money. Definitely. You know, if you go to the shop and you just swipe yes. that credit card, yes. and even the people at the shop, they will say to you, when you say, I don't have anything, they say, oh, no, just bring a card, just bring swipe. Card. Because swiping, or even more so, the ones that you have for Markham's or mm. Edgar's, where the, you, you swipe and create debt into the future, um, is, it feels like it's not money. Mm. And I always say to people sometimes that next time when you go shopping, take your money, withdraw it and change it to cash yes and you start doing paying one two three you yeah, realize that no this is crazy realize. by the time you get to 1.3 1.5 2000 but swiping 3000 rand mm. it's nothing yeah but when you count it mm. you'll start realizing the value Just of the it. weight of so, that money. so so there is a radical approach that is required where mm. people destroy all their unhealthy debt, credit cards, shops. And because one time I was at a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a church and there was one lady, she had 18 cards. Hello. You know, credit cards and cards from every shop. So we need to have a process where we destroy that and mm. buy everything on cash. cash. Have a re family resolution to say, this debt that we have, mm. we are going to fight it, but we're not creating any new. Yes. All what we're going to do from this day onwards is to stop, wait until I've got enough money. Mm. I mean, one of the things I, I said, you know, I made a decision back in 2008 as a family to say, we're not buying anything on debt. Yes. Not even cars. We're going to save even for a car. Mm. The only debt we're going to have is going to be the bond. Yes. Anything else must be cash. Mm. And I said, can you imagine, you know, as a preacher moving around wearing a suit on debt? that belongs to Edgar's, mm. that I'm still owing. Mm. How can I talk liberation mm. when I'm oppressed by my suit? Mm. You know, and, 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 and that's why there is a need to do that, so that we, we work on that because many of us are not yet at the drowning stage, mm -hmm. okay, um, but some of us are on the journey mm -hmm. towards there because we are told, particularly in South Africa, that more than 50% of people who are waking are drowning in debt. Yes, are in trouble with debt. Mm. And that means if you look at any congregation, cut it into half, anyone that you're looking at, half of them, they're, they're, who's they're, employed. Yes, who's it? employed, yes, it's, it's, it's drowning in, into debt mm. because of the culture that we've created around indebtedness. So there is a need for us to take resolutions as families mm. to say, we're going to stop debt, mm -hmm. we're going to wait for cash. We're going to buy things on cash. Even if uh, the shop comes up and says 75% sale, mm. he says, no, without if, cash, without we're, not cash we're not buying. Mm. We're going to wait until we, we deal with cash. Does debt ever get old? Um, yes, obviously there is issue of debt that become, you know, prescribed debt, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is a situation where if you've got a debt for over three years, if the person never claimed it or send you notification for it after that they cannot claim it because it become prescribed over that period of time so it's not that you have a date for three years then it expires if the person that you owe yes. never sends you a notification, notification or, or get a judgment or a judgment against you yes that debt will prescribe. for a period of three years yes. then that debt prescribes yes, in south yes. africa yes in south africa that's, that's that, that debt prescribed so um and i suppose it's um, probably an easy way out for those who, who, whose creditors have not been following up on them. Yes. Th that, in that way, they can be able to, to get away with... Uh, Which is that. a little bit tricky in today's very electronic it and is. Uh, technologically it, 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 advanced it, it, world. It, it, it is tricky, but I think there are a number of those situations that people find themselves lucky to get out on that. Yes. What is bankruptcy? Uh, bankruptcy is a process where a person who can no longer pay their debt um, can um, get that debt kind of, can be liquidated and get that debt right off. It's, it's sort of, it's not, it's sort of 
liquidate all their assets and those they can get the money from that mm. and obviously any debt becomes written off but it's not all debt that gets written off mm. in b with bankruptcy um, we are told that like student loan okay. you can still you, you can still be required to pay it even <laughs> after you're bankrupt <laughs> and debt like uh, taxes Yes. It also cannot be liquidated in bankruptcy, so you still owe the taxes that you, you still need to pay. And I can't remember any other debt that you, but it's a process where all your, if you cannot pay, obviously they look into um, your overall value that you have in your assets and what you owe, and what you owe is more than what you, what you have in your assets. I think now to move into a more African scope of yes. our discussion. Um, Let's talk, first talk about marriage. Let's, yes. let's talk about the, happy, the happier times. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, if I marry someone yes. who has debt, do I yeah. automatically inherit their debt? Does their debt become my responsibility as well? It depends also on the, on the type of marriage that you get into. So if you are marrying in community or property, you then all your assets are becoming put together. I suppose that's one thing about the big power of marriage. Yes. Because marriage connects you emotionally, physically, and also financially. So in the community of property, that means you will inherit that debt. And that's why it becomes, and I've had many couples who get into problems because they didn't know that this one was already blacklisted. So mm. they got married. The next thing they're trying to buy a house. And now they cannot buy a house because they jointly, mm. they look into your uh, indebtedness as, as a couple. And then you also becomes, end up owing in that, in that regard. So... Um, obviously, then, if people are married outside of community property, then they remain separated and their debt mm. indebtedness and become separate. If a family member passes away, yes, do I get stuck with their debt? What happens to their debt? Uh, so, for example, my spouse passes away. If yeah, um, I suppose in, in a case of married in community property, we are you, know, you are jointly you're joined in, in, to the debt. Yes, but <laughs> I beyond. suppose if it is any other um, relative you don't inherit the debt that they have, mm. unless it is happening in the context of African situation where they've got children that you need to support and take care of. Oh, so black tax. Yes, black tax, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is what happens when your brother passes away, you, you take over and try to help within the African traditions, yes. So even the indebtedness becomes part of your... So I've failed to, I've gone into bankruptcy or I've failed to manage my debts. Yes. The creditors are all knocking. One of the solutions you've given us is to file for bank bankruptcy or to declare ourselves insolvent. Well, yeah. I guess we are technically insolvent at that point. Yeah. Yes. Um, what are my options? What, what can I do? I suppose um, um, filing for bankruptcy is one solution, mm. um, which kind of help you to have a, a clean slate um, out of life. But there is a process now where there is uh, debt cancelling mm. that, they, that they do, which is came up with a, a national regulator or credit regulator, where they try to consolidate all your debt into mm. one and make sure that you have one small amount that they distribute over that. So they, they talk to all your creditors and say, this person is paying, is owing one million rand. The person cannot own, uh, pay this because they earn X amount. Mm. So for that one million rand, they will pay 2,000 rand, whatever, over a period of time. Mm. So debt cancelling is one solution that has come up, which has been assisting people so that they can manage. At least you can still be able to live, have money to take care of your family while you're dealing with the debt situation. Are there any negative um, side effects or, I guess, negative connotations to one having had been in debt counselling? Of course, one of the things that you sign is that you, you are no longer allowed to get into any other new debt. And that means if you want to buy a car or you want to buy any other things, you cannot be able to do because... During this process. During this process until you've, you've finished the, your, your challenges around debt counselling. So that's the problem. So it's almost like... Um, a form of in and uh, of, of enslavement of in, into to yeah. them uh, for a period of time until you are able to pay up the debt. And I suppose ens enslavement might be the right word because you were free and you were doing whatever you wanted, yes. collected all yes. the debt yes. that you wanted, and yes. now you are being bound You've to make bound. the payment. Exactly, you cannot choose and skip. Yeah, and payments at will. And in fact, they look into how much you earn, and so almost they're determining how much you must pay back and how much you must live on. 
So mm. they are actually they are now in control. They are in control life. of your life. So you have actually just given mm. up your whole life to be given up to them. What does the Bible say about our indebtedness? In fact, that's um, <laughs> very close to what we were saying now, because in in Proverbs twenty two verse seven, the Bible says, um, "The one who has debt, it's a servant of the one who is a lender." Mm. In another version, it says it's a slave mm. of the lender. So, in reality, the Bible is actually warning us against that because, you know, God, you know, God came and set us free, and mm. we're free indeed. Mm. Uh, Christ came to set us free, and now we are getting ourselves back into in slavery. Um, if we look into the the ills and the problems of slavery by its very nature, mm. we it was involuntary. But now we are volunteering ourselves to be slaves of banks, mm. to be slaves of uh, whoever is the master out there. And I think as Christians, that that's something one we're not supposed to be doing. Mm. As we already said, debt um, takes away our happiness, destroys families. Mm. actually destroying life mm. and if you look into many of the divorces that we have in today are results of indebtedness Business. and bad financial management and children are living without parents as a result of my bad decision mm. with regards to money mm. so there is a need for us to liberate ourselves on, on, on debt and live free as God wants us to be Thank you, Mr. Ravengani, for your time. Thank you for your wisdom and thank you for your advice on how to live a slightly debt-free life. We understand that not all debt is bad debt. We understand that not all debt is necessarily good debt. So it's up to us to make prudent financial goals and to set our goals in accordance with what God would have us doing in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. We thank you for joining us. Good luck with your debt planning and your debt management. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.